Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome to another weekly dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. For today, we're gonna cover a heavy mech, which is also a clan mech. I know some of you are not big fans of clan mechs, but right here on this channel, we treat them all the same. Ladies and gentlemen, clap your hands for the Hellbringer, also known in the Inner Sphere as the Loki. Now, for the sake of avoiding confusion, I'm gonna predominantly refer to it as the Hellbringer, because that is the original name. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few basic stats for this guy include It is a heavy Omnimech at 65 tons, a top speed of 86.4 km an hour, and a rounded price of 19.1 million Seabills. The Hellbringer is a very widespread design developed originally by Clan Hell's Horses. However, due to its poor armoring, the Hellbringer was often passed over for more robust Omnimax. The Inner Sphere first encountered the Hellbringer when facing Clan Jade Falcon, which was favoring the design for its immense offensive potential. Earning the codename Loki by someone called Galen Cox, an AFFC officer, which declared that each of the Hellbringer's variants was, and I quote, an utterly mad configuration. At first glance, the mech does appear to be quite unusual, mounting a spread of weaponry, anti personnel equipment, and electronics. The Hellbringer utilizes a standard internal structure and has decent mobility as well with a top speed of 86.4 km an hour. Although it has vast firepower at its fingertips, the design is unfortunately not very durable, mounting just 8 tons of standard armor. And for that very reason, it is not very good in a defensive situation or an extended engagement. In the aftermath of the Battle of Tokasha and the loss of Tokasha mechworks, the Hell's Horses began developing several Omnimechs at once. But out of all of those, only the Hellbringer met with success. The development time for the Hellbringer was reduced significantly through the use of the modules used in the Summoner or Thor Omnimech. Despite poor armor, the Hellbringer devotes almost 43% of its mass to pods, allowing for great offensive potential. The reason for the quick spread of the design was twofold. The horses promptly lost the main production facility, and then used their remaining productions to curry favor with the other clans via trading and gifts. After the wars of reaving and clan space, the Hellbringer would fall out of favor with the surviving home clans due to its association with the Inner Sphere based clans. The design would then be replaced by the Ebon Jaguar in the military service of those in clan space with the exception of Clan Coyote, which is still fielding the mech. Even after the introduction of the updated and upgraded Loki 2 successor design in 3121, Clan Jade Falcon continued producing the cheaper and easy to manufacture original, predominantly on Sudetan during the Dark Age. Overly aggressive warriors, and even disgraced mech warriors, still find its offensive capabilities desirable over defense. Although its sheer amount of equipment can be confusing, comparing the mech to those at the time of the Exodus, the Hellbringer Prime does bear similarities in design and appearance to the classic Warhammer. The main weapons are indeed a pair of ERPPCs. As the Hellbringer draws closer to the enemy, it can bring to bear its smaller and less heat-intensive short-range weapons including three ER medium lasers and a Streak SRM-6. This mech is more than capable of handling infantry too, with a pair of machine guns and two anti-personnel pods on each leg. An advanced targeting computer gives the energy weapons lethal accuracy, and an active probe and an ECM suite help to minimize any tactical advantage that the enemy may have. A few alternate configurations of this thing include the pictures are not that representative of the variants, though. Configuration A 
This one is a long range configuration, although it does have some unusual equipment. A set of two ER large lasers and an Ultra Autocannon 5 are the main weapons, and these are supported by an LRM-20 rack. The mech also carries a NARC missile beacon to increase missile accuracy, probably intended for nearby fire support units. At a closer range, it can defend itself with an ER medium laser, with two machine guns and an active probe. Configuration B This one has a high damage profile at both long and short range. It doesn't utilize energy weapons that much, and thus doesn't have problems with heating. A powerful Gauss rifle and an LB-5X autocannon allows it to ravage both armor and critical systems, with the Gauss rifle's powerful slug and the fragmenting shot of the autocannon. At a closer range it has two SRM racks slaved to an Artemis IV fire control system, with a final ER small laser as a backup weapon. Configuration C This one is a powerful brawler and its only long-range weapon is one ER large laser. This one also makes use of the more recently developed ATM-6 launcher, which is Advanced Tactical Missile. This can perform similarly to LRM, MRM or SRM depending on the ammunition loaded. The C variant also carries a devastating LB-20X autocannon as a knockout weapon able to shred through armor with slug ammo or damage internal components with a fragmenting cluster shot. A pair of ER medium lasers and an ER small laser act as backup weapons. Configuration D This one is an angry infantry hunter. It has four plasma cannons capable of dealing great damage to conventional troops, another four B-pods provide defense against battle armor, while four medium pulse lasers provide accurate damage against hardened targets. Finally, a head mounted micro pulse laser provides added firepower against unarmored infantry. Configuration G This one carries an inner sphere built improved heavy Gauss rifle with 3 tons of ammo. This massive weapon is then supported by another heavy large laser and three ER small lasers. Configuration H This one utilizes the newer, heavy laser technology for its short-range arsenal. The long-range weapons resemble those of the A configuration. It has an Ultra AC-5, although the ER Lodge laser is upgraded to an ER PPC, and the LRM downgraded to an LRM-15. For the close-range combat it has a powerful heavy large laser and four heavy small lasers. The defensive equipment is the same as the A configuration. Configuration J This one is a highly mobile scout unit. Carrying a single Ultra AC-5 and an ERPPC in the arms, supported by two ER medium lasers in each torso and a streak SRM-4. This one also mounts jump jets and has an anti-missile system and an active probe. Each ammo-dependent weapon relying on one ton of reloads. Configuration T This one is a refinement of the Prime variant developed in the Dark Age. It mounts an ER PPC in each arm, supported by a shoulder-mounted ATM-6, three ER medium lasers, and two anti-personnel Gauss rifles. It is protected by an anti-missile system and has Case 2 for the two tons of ATM missiles and one ton of Gauss and AMS ammo. Now, although this next one is technically a different Omnimech, it is also the successor of the Hellbringer slash Loki, known as the Loki Mark II. Developed prior to Grey Monday, the Mark II Loki is a heavy class Omnimech which was originally created for Clan Jade Falcon. Also known as the Hell among the clans, the Loki Mark II is an upgraded variant of the Hellbringer which was developed by the clan's Hell's Horses in 2926. This newer mech differs from its progenitor by having heavier equipment capacity and improved armor protection, but at a cost of lower speed. 
This one would become primarily utilized by the clan Jade Falcon and Hell's Horses in 3145. When the mech would see action during those clans' invasions of the Republic of the Sphere and the Lyran Commonwealth. A particularly notable action utilizing the Loki Mark II was during the Jade Falcon's occupation of Sargasso in 3142. The Ninth Talon deployed the binary of Loki Mark IIs to suppress resistance in the city of Salicastrum. The cluster's Loki Mark IIs, fitted with the B configuration, would use their long tom cannons to blast rebel forces to smithereens. However, a nova of Wolves in Exile forces ambushed the binary, and the ensuing battle destroyed pretty much half of the Loki Mark IIs, and the survivors would withdraw temporarily. A star's worth of survivors from the Ninth would return, and they would face a clan wolf retreat and prevent the world from falling back into Commonwealth hands. The Loki Mark II is particularly notable for its big 40-ton Omnipod capacity. This improvement was achieved via reducing the size of the mech engine to a 260-rated XL fusion engine, installing a small cockpit and using ferrofibrous armor. The prime configuration of the Loki Mark II is geared towards long-range combat. The arms are fitted with a pair of Gauss rifles and ER Lodge lasers, and for closer ranges, it has a right torso-mounted 4-tube streak SRM. The main weapons are supplied with 3 tons of ammo, while the streak launcher has 1 ton. Another 2 double heatsinks are fitted to the prime, to help it cope with the heat of its ER Lodge lasers. Configuration A of the Mark II was designed to handle armored infantry and combat vehicles, coming with a balance of energy and ballistic weaponry. Each of its arms comes with an ERPPC and a medium pulse laser and two double heat sinks. In the right torso, we have two improved heavy medium lasers and two AP Gauss rifles. The left side torso houses a single LB-10X class autocannon. It has 1 ton of ammo for the AP Gauss rifles and 2 tons of ammo for the autocannon. An Angel ECM suite is mounted in the right torso for improved protection. Finally, the B configuration is intended as a fire support mech, with its heavy firepower focused in the long tom cannon and ER Lodge laser, while 4 medium pulse lasers round out the mech's defensive weapons. The 3 tons of ammo for the cannon are found in the right torso, alongside 3 additional heat sinks. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Hellbringer, aka the Loki, and its successor, the Loki Mark II, for today. Now, is the Hellbringer among your favorite battle mechs? Do you like this or the Thor better? considering that they are quite similar. What do you like or dislike most about it? Do feel free to share any thoughts, questions or experiences you might have had with it in the comments below as always. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also click the bell notification icon to stay more up to date. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.